Fall is upon us and Nomad Cosmetics is taking us to Japan. Hello my gorgeous ones, welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia, here on my channel, I love all things affordable fashion, beauty, and fragrance. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, eyeshadow palette reviews, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. All right, you guys, I'm distracted by myself. I'm just gonna say it right now because I mean, these bold red lips and no eyes is very distracting to, to me. A lot of times I don't do my lips until after I do my eyeshadow looks and I, I never wear like no eyes and a bold lip. So I'm kind of like at myself. So if you see me talking and all of a sudden being like, I'm just, I'm startling myself. Okay. What we're here for though is the brand new palette by Nomad Cosmetics. This is the Fuji Five Lakes palette. You guys, this packaging is so, 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 so pretty. Oh my goodness. And this took a little journey, apropos with Nomad, to get to me. Um, they sent it out to me like normal. Typically, it does not take long to get to me. And this time I went on a little family vacay. I was actually in Dallas, in the Dallas area where this shipped out of Grand Prairie. And I get home and I check the tracking and this thing came here to where I live. Then it shipped off six hours away from here on the other side of Texas and uh, took a couple of days and then it made its journey back to me. So I have no idea why, I guess it just wanted to fit the theme of Nomad. I don't know, but the point is it is here and it is very, very lovely. And we get the little card like normal with Nomad. And um, this is the five uh, Fuji Five Lakes Intense Color Palette. There are six vivid mattes, six luminescent shimmers. And um, you know, the theme is like fall in uh, Japan where you have snow capped mountains with the beautiful foliage. And then it also says um, the favorite pastime, Mamijari red leaf hunting begins. So I guess they go look for these red leaves are budding and then you have the snow capped mountains with the lakes as well. So the inside of the palette does reflect that whole theme. You have the yellows and the reds for the foliage and then you also have the blues for that like icy cool tone lake. So this is a, you know, if you love cool and warm tones together, which I personally love that in a palette because I love both, this is gonna be really exciting for you. Obviously, reds are like big right now. And then, you know, the yellows, these tones of yellows have been popping up like crazy as well. The mustardy yellows. And then we keep seeing lots of blues in indie palettes. I've, I've heard some feedback lately that people are like, it's a lot of blues lately and it is, but I think these are really, really lovely. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and cut in the video like I like to do with this in the natural light. So you can really get a feel of the shades and the little shifts of the shimmers because I think at first glance, people might think these two are really similar, but they are different. And I'll also show you the, sim the shimmer swatches. So as you can see, the shimmers are different. You're not getting repeats in here. Um, also, I want to point out real quick, I almost forgot to say this. I am wearing shades for blush and highlight right now. So I used Burning Bush as my blush on each side. So it definitely works. I went very, very light handed. Then because I know I'm doing a look on each eye today and I kind of knew on this eye, I'm going to go reds and blues. On this eye, I'm gonna go reds and yellows. 
So I use a little bit of Diamond Fuji right here. There's that icy kind of sheer blue as a highlight mixed with the pompous grass. And then on this side, since I'm doing the yellow, I used golden ginkgo and the pompous grass as well. So I mixed a little of that icy pink with the yellow golden and then the icy blue with the pink. So definitely keep that in mind. You've got three shimmers in here that absolutely work as highlights. I've been doing that a lot lately where I've, I've got so many blushes that it's almost overwhelming. So when I'm testing out a palette, if there are any shades in there that I think could really work as a blush or highlights as well, I've just been using them out of the palette because then I know it's gonna tie into the eye makeup and they've been working out really well for me that way. So yes, I am gonna do three looks for you guys. Typically I would love to do four because I could see a lot of different looks with this. Um, I could see, you could do monochromatic reds, monochromatic blue, monochromatic yellow, and then you can mix and match all of them or the two and two like I'm going to do. But since it did take longer to get to me than normal, since it went on a, a week long journey across the state of Texas, I am just gonna do three looks. So today I'm gonna do blues and reds to side, reds and yellows to side, then tomorrow I'm gonna mix the yellows and the blues just to make sure that I use every shade. So let's go ahead. Oh, I've got this in my hand because I was just gonna grab a little bit more just to show you really icy blue pops. That's the Diamond Fuji and then the Golden Ginkgo. I'm got right here, this yellow. Golden, perfect, okay. Now let's move in to the eye look. So I think what I'm gonna do is start with Mount Fuji, this lightest um, kind of minty blue shade. And I'm just gonna pop that right in this inner portion. I actually, I adore a light blue, like a baby blue or even a turquoise. Um, contrasting with red. I think it's so pretty. I love it in clothing or like a mint green even with a red in clothing. It's just, it pops. I think it's so fun. So I've always said whatever looks good paired together as clothing, you know, color blocking and all that. If it looks good on the body, it's probably going to look good on the eyes as well. It's not going to clash. It's going to go. I know it can be intimidating, but you really just have to kind of jump in there and try it out. So that has some nice pigment to it actually for being such a light shade. I could see the blues in here just being like an ice princess look. If you just stuck to these lighter blues and that icy blue highlighter, you could definitely do like a winter, you know, Jack Frosty type of look. Okay, let's then go, let's contrast a little, and I'm gonna go in with a Burning Bush, the one that I used for my blush, and, and this brush is a little angled here, so I'm just gonna take that and kind of pack on and this does kind of, on my skin anyway, turn a little pink. For me, it's not a true, true, true red. Um, you know, like if it was a lipstick shade, I would say it had like a pink undertone to it. But it's definitely, it's closer to red than it is to pink though, I will say that. So I'm just gonna kind of angle it out this way. Okay, now I'm actually going to go in with Fuji Goko, and that is the shade right here. And I'm gonna see what that just kind of looks like blended in. Okay, I really like this shade. This is a this is a really pretty color of blue, honestly. The way that it's blending into the red is definitely changing it. It's not one of those that you're blending in and you're like, okay, the red stays red. And you know, the blue, like it definitely comes together and makes, it's not even like purple, you know, red and blue, <laughs> going back to second grade uh, or kindergarten make purple, but it's not really even making a purple. It's just making kind of a, I don't know, just a deeper version of this blue. It's kind of weird. So 
I'm just gonna end up blending that together because, you know, this is all experience. This is why you watch videos, you know, um, before you either buy palettes or before you go in to create a look is to see, well, what do those shades do together? They look fine. Like it, it's not making it muddy. They're blending in together fine. It just, the blue really takes over that red. So I'm gonna have to go back in somewhere and add red back into it. Cause as it is right now, it's almost erasing it. I'm just kind of leaving a little hue on the outer portion. I'm gonna leave it like that just to see if this is where I wanna leave it or if I wanna do something different. But man, this shade of blue is so pretty. And you know, it's just saying that I've heard feedback from people saying, you know, there's been so much blue lately. And um, I don't know if I have a blue this shade. Really, I truly don't know. Um, I'm gonna take Momiji, which is this deepest shade right here. Deep kind of blood red. Just to add some red back in here and kind of deepen this up. Oh yeah, okay, now this took it more purple. Interesting. Very, very interesting. See how it's making it more of a, it's actually kind of reminding me of a snow cone when you have red and blue together. And when it drips down, it's kind of turning into purple color. It's really, really pretty, but it did not do that with the lighter red, at least layering blue on top of the red. So maybe going back in with the red on top of the blue is what's gonna make it purple. I'm sure there's some color theory explanation out there of that. But I kind of like how that looks. It's kind of spacey as well, like kind of deep space looking. Okay, um, now I'm going to go in with, do I want to do blue on the lower lash or the red? Okay, I think I'm going to go in back in with the Momiji and just kind of run that along here, blend those together. I thought about going in with Mount um, Ho Hoi, but, or Hoe, maybe it's Hoe, maybe it's Hoe. I think I'm gonna save that for the blue and yellow look. And we'll stick with more predominantly red here. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of a look that I did with the Davini Beauty Ascension palette. I didn't notice it at first. I'll grab it here in a minute because actually I completely forgot. I grabbed these um, four Nomad palettes just to kind of show you. These are the ones that I thought of off the top of my head that I thought would pair really well with the Fuji palette. So I will get those out in a minute and show you why I think that, but I'll also grab the Ascension palette because I think it would pair really nicely with this as well. Um, I like that, but I think I do want to take some of that deepest blue right here and just, yeah, because that really blends in. It kind of makes that purpley tone again. Very cool. I really like these blended on top of each other. That's that's good to know because I think a lot of people look at the palettes and they just see the shades that are in there and they forget about the shades that you can create, the colors you can create when you blend them together. So you can definitely get some purpley tones from this palette. I love how kind of murky and kind of space grunge this looks. Very, very cool. Okay, so for the shimmer, all right. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of Fiery Maple. And it's a, like a basic, ooh, it's so pretty. When I say basic, I just mean there's no shifts to it. But oh wow, that is bright. Wow, okay, this is not a a gritty shimmer. It's a very smooth metallic shimmer. That is 
That is really pretty. I was not honestly expecting it to be that bright and impactful, but I really like that. Wow, okay, that's exciting. All right, so next I think I'm gonna go in with, let's do the pompous grass. I thought about doing a blue, but we'll just save that since I know I'm doing blue twice with the yellow and also with the red. So let's do, that's really pretty. This would be a good inner corner for sure. But I definitely want to go in with Diamond Fuji as my inner corner, that blue icy one. I really like that. That is pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, now I've got my Diamond Fuji. And we are going to, oh yeah. That definitely pops nicely. It would also really be pretty on top of one of the deeper blue shimmers just to brighten it up as a topper, but for sure a gorgeous inner corner. It would also be a really pretty brow bone highlight as well. Okay, let's move it to this eye. I really didn't know that's where I was going with this eye, but I really like it. And I think it's gonna be one that when the lashes are on, it's gonna be awesome. So I think I want to go in with Koyo, the brightest yellow. There is a lighter yellow here that a lot of times that's what I would go with the lightest shade right here, but I want it to be a bit brighter. And that one's more muted. Uh, that one's called Yellow Popular. So yeah, let's go in with this since it's brighter. This is truly your, this is truly like your primary colors, yellow, yellow here, slightly mustardy, but a pretty true pigmented yellow. And then I'm going to go in with Burnished Beach. Burnished, burnished beach. And we're going to do the same, come out this way with the angled brush. I really, really like this shade. It's so good. This is that kind of 70s orangish, brownish yellow. Like we had some textured wallpaper in my house growing up that was left over from that era and it had this color. And I remember thinking when I was young, like it was so ugly. And now I'm like, let me put it all over my eyes. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna go back in with the burning bush. And I'm not getting a lot of fallout by the way, which is nice. Oh yeah, this is gonna be what really takes it fall, like true fall looking is mixing the red with the yellow. I really like that. I like putting this here in the middle because it goes against, I think what I would typ typically, I would have put this shade out here and just gradient gone the yellow into the red, but just to challenge myself, it was like, let me put it in an unexpected place. And I really, I like it because then the yellows frame this red. And yeah, they blend really nicely all together, the, the yellows and the red together. Okay, so now I think what I'm gonna do is go in with that Momiji, the deepest shade again. And I'm also going to put that on the lower lash on this side. And I'm, I'm resisting the urge to want to put something like real deep right here, like this shade to deepen that up like I did over here, because I know if I do that, it's just going to take away um, this yellow and then kind of what is the point for putting it there. So I'm going to resist that urge. I'm just gonna put this on the lower lash line. And then I'm also gonna come in closer with that yellow popular on the 
inside here just to kind of use it because I know, well, I guess I could use it tomorrow with the blue. I just wanted to make sure I use every shade. So these meet together, they kind of make a peach shade. If you mix yellow popular and Momiji, you're gonna get a peach, which looks really pretty with the orange, which looks really pretty with the, um, the yellows and the red peach, it makes sense. Yeah. I like those blended in together a lot. Okay, so for the lid, let's go with Golden Ginkgo. So that is this really pretty kind of canary shimmer. There's a little bit of reflect of something kind of bluish green in it. It's not very noticeable, but it, it makes it to where it's not just yellow or gold. Like there's some kind of sheen to it that picks up a little bit of blue. It probably is blue because that would make sense with the rest of the palette. Keeps it really bright and fun. And then inner corner, I'm gonna go in with the pompous grass, which was what we put right here. Oh yeah, that looks good because it's pinky, but it also, since those two came together and made this kind of peach, it really goes nicely. It looks right in there together. It looks seamless, going like pink peach to more of a red. This is really pretty too. I really, really like this. I, this all feels a little bit too like a, like a bird, an exotic bird. Both of them kind of do in a way, but I definitely think even more so this eye. It's kind of giving me like cardinal parrot vibes almost. So, all right, you guys, I think we're done with our first two looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lashes on and I think it'll really come to life. Okay, so the lashes are on and I think both looks are really, really beautiful. This is, of course, smokier and deeper, so it makes the eye look kind of more deep set and sultry, while this is much brighter. It kind of opens up the eye, makes it look a little bit rounder and bigger, but I think both are so pretty. Really, really pleased with these looks. And real quick, I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you the palettes I think this would pair really well with. And then tomorrow I'll do the third look. But this is the Ascension palette I was talking about that I did a look that was pretty similar to this look. I do have a busted shade in here that is really, really messy. So I'm gonna to try to be careful. But um, if you will take a look here, these really pair really, really nicely together. Um, you have these orangey, um, yellowy shades that pair well, and then you have a bluish tone in here that's a little bit more purple leaning, but of course, you know, when you blend these together, you get some of that purple, but yeah, I think this would be a great pairing palette, but as far as Nomad palettes, the um, Fites de Provence, look how well these go. I think this could be one big, large palette. Really, this just adds on to like your reds and your yellows, and then you have purpley tones in here. Um, and then of course, like the bluish, grayish shades that I think would go with the blues. So that would be an option. Also, Hudson Valley, I think would be a great one to bring in some of the neutrally shades in here. I think that you could do some really fun looks with this. And again, like you could combine deeper with the yellows and the reds with this one and then bring in those neutrals. Then we have the um, Fire and Ice palette, the Ireland palette. This is discontinued now, but if you have it, I think this would definitely pair beautifully. 
And then lastly, the Mary Cash palette is also discontinued, but I think that you could use this to pop in some of those neutrals. You have the brighter yellows in here and brighter blues if you wanna do kind of a contrast of like cool tones, warm tones like that. So, all right, but man, first two looks I think are bomb. I really, really like these. So tomorrow I'm going to just use the shades I have not used. So we'll definitely be going in with some of the, the blues and yellows and, and we will wrap up the Fuji five leaks. All right, you guys, I'm back with new hair. Yes, I got my hair lightened and trimmed a little bit. So I'm actually running a bit behind. So we're just going to hop into this because I have to pick up my kids in a little bit and I want to get this done for you guys. So let's go ahead and hop in and we're going to do yellow and um, blue. And let me point out once again, the blush. I'm obsessed with this blush right now. And I actually use a yellow. You guys have to use a mustard yellow blush if you never have, or even a bright yellow. I love it. Don't be intimidated by that. So I used that right here is burnished, burnished beach. And then the Momoji, Mom, Momiji, Momiji is the ombre going up here darker. And then I use golden ginkgo again for the highlight. I love it. Such a cool blush look. Okay. Now, um, I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with Koyo, the bright yellow. And how about we just put that right here above the crease. I'm kind of winging it here because I had an idea of what I might do. And then I got in such a hurry after my hair appointment <laughs> and my window of time to film this for you guys that my plan is kind of going out the window. So we're just gonna, we're gonna roll with it. So let's lay that down right here. Again, I really like this pigment. Nice. Okay, next we're gonna go in with Fuji Goko right here. This is that blue that I love. This blue shade I think is so, so, so pretty. And we're just going to pack this on the outside and kind of blend it up into the yellow. Okay. I think that looks really, really pretty together. I'm going to take the yellow popular and I'm just going to go ahead and pop that here in the inner lid just to kind of brighten this portion and lighten it up a little bit. This is kind of a, like a cornflower yellow. It actually does show up. I wasn't sure how well it would show up, but it, it really does. I actually quite like it, or it kind of reminds me of, of custard, that sort of a yellow. Next, I'm taking the Mount um, Hawaii, Hawaii, Hoi, and that is what I'm going to put in the lower lash area just ever so slightly up on top to blend them together. Okay, next I'm taking the Mount Fuji shade, the lightest icy blue, and I'm gonna run that along the inner portion of the lower lash into the deeper shade. Okay, next shimmers, we're going to go in with Yaman Akako and we're going to pop that on the outer portion. That is really, really pretty. I like that. Nice. Nice and bright, glowy blue. Then we're gonna go in with Kawangong Kichiko. Oh my gosh. 
I know I'm butchering it. I know, I know some people get so mad at that, but I'm in a hurry and don't have time to look up how to say it. So I really, really apologize. I know that can be very, very annoying to some people. That is pretty. Wow. That is really, really pretty. That has a little bit of a shiftiness to it. And I, I love that it has a little shift in the shimmer. Okay, inner corner. I'm gonna go, I believe with Golden Ginkgo. Let's see. No, oh, I don't like it with a brush. I'm gonna use my finger. Much better. Yeah, I think that is the one. I thought about going in with the Diamond Fuji to make it an icy corner. I think that would be really pretty too. But because Golden Ginkgo has a little bit of a, a blue shifty sparkliness to it, I just think it perfectly picks up the blue here. And honestly, I do think the Golden Ginkgo has like a little bit of something green in it too, which makes sense, you know, the Anytime the blue and the yellow are going to hit, they're going to kind of make a little bit of a green, you know, gradient in there. So the shimmer really works so well with the blue and the yellow. Gorgeous. Okay, let me go ahead and pop on the liner lashes and we are going to wrap up this beautiful palette. All right, so here we are with the lashes on. I did a little... Uh, holographic liner so it kind of shifts orange gold I think it's so pretty I'm kind of giving myself sailor moon vibes something about it right I think this is so pretty though I will say there's some things that are standing out to me about this palette and it's the blendability I mean these mattes are just blending so nicely I did not really have fallout and I don't usually get a ton of fallout with Nomad, but sometimes the blues, if I already have makeup on and then I go to put it on, it'll end up all over my face. I didn't really have that issue that much. The shimmers, there's no hard pan issues with these. They're very, very smooth, very reflective, very shiny metallic, similar to the shimmers that were in Ghost Town USA. I think this is beautiful. Honestly, this is one of my favorite Nomad palettes so far, um, just because I feel like they blend really well. The colors, when they are mixed, create new shades, the formulas there, and I love that you have a mix of warm and cool in here, and I love that several of these work for blushes and highlight. Highly recommend that you guys try that if you pick up this palette. Very, very happy with Fuji Five Lakes. I think it is gorgeous. This does go on sale on Tuesday. You can use my code Budget Beauty to save some. Two big thumbs up with this. I think this is a gorgeous release. Perfect to bring in the fall. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know which look was your favorite. And as always, have fun shopping, budget shopping. Bye.